WebRTC stands for Web Real-Time Communication. WebRTC is a standard that allows two computers or devices to transfer data without requiring a plug-in. For ORCID Core VMS and ORCID Fusion VMS, the two devices are in fact a client and a server that will transfer video. No plugin means that you don't have to download or install anything extra on your client device to enable the transmission of good quality live and recorded video. All you need is a web browser. The first major thing we need to point out is that ORCID Core VMS and ORCID Fusion VMS currently support WebRTC mode only when using Google Chrome version 66 or higher in a desktop environment. So, use a desktop and Google Chrome 66 or higher to open ORCID Core or ORCID Fusion VMS and sign in. But how does WebRTC work? In order for the two devices to communicate, each one must first supply an IP address and a port. The IP address identifies the device and its place on the network or internet. It also allows the device to communicate with other devices on the Internet. The port provides a path on which video can travel. Let's focus on the IP address for a second. A device will have both a private IP address and it might have a public IP address that it shares with other devices. A private IP address allows the device to communicate with other devices on the same network. A public IP address is a little more complicated. When a device needs to communicate through the Internet, the network router or firewall reroutes its data through the public IP addresses to and from the device. The private IP address and the device remain protected behind the firewall. OK, back to our ORCID Core VMS server and client. Once we have an IP address and a port for the client and the server, we have a candidate pair. Now we need to see if these candidates are compatible so they can communicate. Let's say you have an ORCID Core VMS server at your headquarters. You're using a desktop, the client, in the same building, on the same network, to monitor your security cameras. Via IP addresses, the client will signal to the server that it wants to see some video. The server receives the request, approves it, and then sends video to the client through the specified ports. Since these two devices are on the same network, there are no barriers to overcome and direct media transport is easy. Now, working with the same ORCID Core VMS server at your headquarters, you are monitoring your security cameras using a desktop, the client, at a satellite location, which is on a different network. When the devices are on different networks, and one or both of them are behind firewalls, this direct connection will fail. This is where a stun server comes into play. The stun server is going to play middleman and will search for additional connection candidates that can be used to establish a video connection between the two devices. By default, ORCID Core VMS will use stun.ipconfigured.com, which is publicly available on the Internet. Other stun servers may be used as well, but you'll need to make sure you tell ORCID about the stun server by editing the ORCID Core VMS properties file. The stun server will generate new candidates for the public IPs of the client and the server. These are stun or server reflexive candidates. The stun server will then add these candidates to a pool of potential candidates, which includes the private IP addresses of the client and the server. The system will first try to use the local candidates to connect. But when those fail, we'll try each of the stun candidates. One of those candidate pairs should eventually succeed.
In effect, the STUN server is identifying the client and server public IP addresses, negotiating ports, and traversing the client-server firewall. All of this is done behind the scenes in WebRTC mode, so ORCID Core VMS and ORCID Fusion VMS can provide good quality live and recorded video.